Void Mage Gamer is now partnered with Flipside Gaming, so you can use the promo code on their website, all caps, Void Mage, to get 10% off all orders, $10 or more. It's a great way that you can support both Flipside Gaming and Void Mage Gamer's channel. Hello guys, welcome back to another Top 10 Commander video. We're going to be going over what I think are the 10 best reprints from Ultimate Masters for the format. Even though my entire opinion of the set, I think they're quite greedy with the pricing, I still believe that there are a lot of good quality reprints and a lot of cards got reprinted because they needed to be reprinted they haven't been reprinted before it wasn't just reprinting cards for modern it wasn't just reprinting cards that you've already reprinted before which we're gonna go over cards that have such as Liliana and Snapcaster both of these have been reprinted pretty recently in Modern Masters 2017 so them getting yet another reprint isn't really surprising and I don't think it does help us commander players out that much but still worth an honorable mention I would say valuable cards you're not going to get upset if you pull these and how i'm going to rank this is just impact on the format in my own opinion so let's jump right on into it number 10 is karn liberated does see a ton of commander play but really expensive because of the modern impact just tron being a powerful deck and you could also make the argument that ugin did need a reprint more so than karn but still worth being in the top 10 because I mean, Karn's Karn. Number nine is Lord of Extinction. This is exactly what I'm talking about. A card that hasn't been reprinted, that sees a ton of commander play. If you're playing black, green, any sort of graveyard strategy, Lord of Extinction is a five mana creature with an insane power and toughness that you can use to your advantage, manipulate, give it trample, do whatever you want. There's a ton of awesomeness that you can do with massive creatures and commander. Lord of Extinction is one of the most intimidating because it's everybody's graveyards. Definitely going to cast capture a lot of attention whenever it hits the field. Then number eight, we have Cavern of Souls. Cavern of Souls is also another pretty good modern card. However, I honestly believe that Cavern is just as impactful in the commander format. Just because we have so many good tribal decks, it's a big part of what the format is. I mean, Commander 2017 was entirely about tribal decks. So there's no doubt in my mind that Cavern of Souls getting yet another reprint, hopefully it lowers the price. It's pretty much an auto include in any sort of tribal deck. Makes your commander more more consistent you don't have to worry about it getting countered if you're playing something like edgar markov or the ur dragon perfect mana fixing you don't really have to worry about too much number seven is balefire dragon this is another card this was from innistrad never been reprinted before amazing that it finally is this is one of those cards that it took them forever to do so if you can think about commander 2017 and the dragon deck i was almost certain that this was going to be reprinted in that deck while that deck ended up giving us some decent reprints balefire was unfortunately not one of them this is an amazing creature not just for dragon tribal decks if you want to throw it into that go for it but you could also play it in any good red deck in commander you have a pretty powerful creature that's also capable of mowing down your opponent's board taking care of most of what's going to be in your way very deadly creature in red and does see a significant amount of its play in commander more so than any other format i don't really think it sees any kind of modern play so yeah it's pretty much an all-star in commander kind of like lord of extinction number six is in tomb this did get a reprint in eternal masters which wasn't too long ago a couple years ago but even then the card is still hovering around twenty dollars for that version the original one from odyssey is a little bit more expensive tutors are so so important they're so powerful in the format being able to pretty much get anything you want from your deck to your hand or to your graveyard some decks it's just as good it makes your deck more consistent it makes your deck more powerful especially if you're playing combos and tomb is definitely a card for you competitive edh loves in tomb graveyard based decks love and tomb overall it's a very important card for the format and typically the cheaper in mana cost for your tutors the better it's going to be it's going to allow you to do more stuff in the same turn number five we have Micaeus the unhollowed yet again another necessary reprint not just because the card's super expensive, but because it hasn't been reprinted before. All the way from Dark Ascension. About time we finally get him. Really powerful commander card if you want to make a commander deck based around zombies or just good aristocrat abilities. Go for it. This guy is made for combos though. If you love Persist, you can get infinite death triggers, infinite ETBs, and win with something like a Perforos God of the Forge or a Blood Artist, anything like that. And there's obviously the Triskelion combo. Maybe not the friendliest card for commander but definitely one that has shaped the format 
even if you're not going to play any sort of super oppressive combos or anything that's going to end the game on the spot, just having a creature out there that's going to make your other creatures come back into play, you're giving them undying, that's just insane. Then number four, we have Reanimate. Now this is a card that has been reprinted before, but not really in recent memory. So it's definitely overdue. Again, super efficient cards are usually going to be better more often than not. For one mana, you get pretty much any creature card that you want back from the graveyard to the battlefield. Yeah, you are going to lose life equal to its casting cost, so that could be a brick wall for you at the end of the game. But just the efficiency for one mana, you could get some creature that's 10 mana from the graveyard. Any graveyard, not just your graveyard, but your opponent's as well. It's an incredibly powerful card. I can understand just by its power alone why they wouldn't want to reprint it that often. But especially for Commander for Black decks, there were definitely a lot of cards like these that needed reprints. They're super efficient and it's just one of those cards that goes to show the power that Black has in the format. Number three, we kind of have a tie here because I really don't want to choose. Kozilek, Butcher of Truth, and Ulamog, the Infinite Gyre. Both of these are just insane, and you're likely going to be playing both of them in the same deck. And when I say deck, I mean Animar, because let's be honest, a lot of Animar decks are going to be playing Kozilek and Ulamog, along with really any other Eldrazi you're capable of playing. There's an insane amount of cost reduction in that deck. But even outside of Animar, you do have some good decks that are going to take advantage of both Kozilek and Ulamog. You just may not see the Cloudstone Curio combos, but I mean, hey, they are technically legendary creatures. You can make commander decks based around them. They have to be colorless, though. It does kind of force you to be creative, though, which is some of the things that I do like about commander especially with the commander color identity ruling, so you really have to be careful the cards you choose, and certain constraints do make the format interesting to me at least. So hey, go for it, make a colorless commander deck. Really interesting options, but yeah, even if you're not playing them as commanders, still powerful cards is one of the 99. Their cast triggers are some of the best, so even if you do end up countering them, you get some pretty powerful effects. Then number two, we have what is arguably one of the most powerful cards in the entire game, not just for commanders, we're talking about Demonic Tutor. Two mana tutor in black that can get you anything from your deck to your hand. You don't have to reveal it. And that is really probably the best reason I can give for why black is the best color in Commander. The tutors are significantly better than any other tutor. Any other color, what they're capable of doing, you usually have to reveal it. With black, you can get a creature, you can get an artifact, an enchantment, a land. You don't have to reveal it, and they really don't know exactly what you're going to get, unless your play style is incredibly transparent. But like I said before, black has a lot of these cards that are super efficient. They allow you to play other spells during the same turn, which is very underrated. If you just went with a Diabolic Tutor, that's 4 mana, you may not be able to do what you want to do that same turn, but with only 2 mana for a Demonic Tutor, you have access to more mana. It's basic efficiency, one of the best cards ever, and yes, technically it has been reprinted before quite a bit, but it's still going to maintain its value, it's and auto-include in just about every deck that can play it. And then we have number one, which is a card that I think deserved to be reprinted even more so than Demonic Tutor, and it is Mana Vault. Oh my gosh, this card has not been reprinted that often. It did get a Masterpiece reprinting from the Kaladesh block, so I guess if you want to consider that a reprint, you could, but it's not going to affect the accessibility of the card, which is really what I'm trying to talk about here. Cards that don't get reprinted enough deserve reprints. It doesn't matter if they're super expensive. Mana Vault is a card that is going to see a ton of play in Commander. The only other format I could think it would see play in is Vintage, and even then it's going to see competition with cards like Soul Ring and Mana Crypt, so it's not going to really steal the show. But in Commander, I mean 3 mana for 1 mana on a Mana Rock, that's pretty devastating. You can just get off to an insane lead, and it does actually help the competitive nature of your playgroup. If your players, if your opponents, if they have access to better mana ramp, it's going to make their deck significantly better. So it does kind of help to play more than just your usual soul ring. Something like this is going to allow you to play something on turn two that you may have only been able to do turn five or even later on in the game. It's just insane. But anyway, guys, that's going to do it for this top 10 video. Let me know what you think about the cards from Ultimate Masters. Yes, these were a lot of the box toppers, and I know we're still going to get a lot more, but to be honest, I don't really think it's going to be anything beyond just uncommons and maybe bulk rares. Not to say we won't get anything special, but these were the 40 cards that were box toppers, so I'm just going to assume that these were the best of the best. But anyway, you guys have a wonderful day. Vordier signing off. See you all next video.